Our text is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 20. And then we will flip over to the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 1 to 17. Daniel, chapter 1, verse 20. And then we will go to Daniel, chapter, chapter 6, verse 1 to 17. Daniel 1, 20, reads, and I quote, And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers in all his realm. Then in Daniel chapter 6, verse 1 to 17, it says, And it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the king, whole kingdom. And over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them, so that the king would suffer no loss. That it, this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. And so these governors and satraps thronged before the king and said thus to the king, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom and the administrators and the satraps and the counselors and the advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that who, what, whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, the king, King Darius, signed the written, uh, written decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing had, was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who, who petitions any god or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? And the king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. So the answer said before the king that da that's Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you, O king, of the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that, this, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may change. So the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, or of the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his, with his own signet ring and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Amen. This morning, I want to speak on the subject dealing with all with all oppositions to your success. Dealing with all oppositions to your success. I want to say to you that your journey in life, even though your success is guaranteed, also oppositions that you will face 
is guaranteed. The oppositions will the, the oppositions are guaranteed. Now there are three keys to that we need to progress or obtain promotion in our life. I'll try and keep the message short so that we can pray. Three keys that we need for us to progress and obtain promotion in life. Number one key is this. Play to your skills, your natural talents, and your anointing. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible says, As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. I want you to know that your progress in life is determined by what you carry. Your gifts, your talent, your abilities have been given to God by you as tools for you to be able to network and progress in life. The Bible says the gift of a man will make room for him and bring him before great men, not ordinary men. So your gifts, your talents, your abilities are tools in your hands for you to progress in life. And so for Daniel, what God gave to Daniel and the three other boys were specific gifts. God gave them wisdom. He gave them knowledge and, to da- and skill in all literature. And to Daniel, the Bible says he gave to him understanding of all dreams and visions. Now, these gifts were specific because these were the gifts, the, te- the, the, the skills, the, the anointing that these boys need, needed for them to succeed in Babylon. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. In John chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus said, Until now you have not asked me anything. You have not asked anything in my name. And he said, Ask, and you will receive. In James chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible says, He that lacketh wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously without finding fault, and it will be given to him. So I want to believe that before God gave those gifts to Daniel, to the Hebrew boys, they must have prayed to God for for those things. Hello, somebody. They must have prayed to God for these things. Now, I want you to know that for you to succeed in life, there are certain competencies that you need. There are certain skills that you need. You need to be able to assess these skills and think within yourself. In the next five years, I want to attain certain heart and heart and height in my career, in in my academic, in my business. What are the required skills and competencies that I need? Am I making sense to you? And then begin to ask God for these talents, for these gifts and these abilities. Now, some abilities we can ask God for it for them, and some abilities. We have to develop. Hello. Even though God gave them skill in all literature, they still had to study for them to become experts in that area. The Bible says of all the questions the kings asked the four Hebrew boys, the Bible says they answered all of them and they were ten times better. So God can give you lemon, but he won't give you lemonade. You have to make the lemonade yourself. There are some gifts, I I mean, some abilities that you have to develop yourself. You have to. You have to. And so these Hebrew boys developed these skills. They developed these abilities. And then they were able to shine, shine in the marketplace. What specific skills do you need for you to rise? You've got to identify those skills and begin to work on them. Begin to work on those skills. You need to work on that gift. You need to work on that skill. You need to work on that relational skill. You need to work on that competence. You need to work that ability to be able to operate that boardroom. If you need to work your voice, work your voice. If you need to work the steps, work the steps. Whatever you need to do, work at those gifts and make them Perfect. Hallelujah. Help me tell three people and tell them, begin to work on your gifts. Work on those gifts. Work those gifts. Work those gifts until you become perfect in those things. Hallelujah. It was Dan Kennedy who said that if you become very good at what you do, there is nothing that can stop you from getting paid more and promoted faster. The four Hebrew boys, they knew the answers. They knew all about the kingdom. And every question the king asked them, they had answers. 
You need to know, you need to set goals to be able to know enough about your field, to become an expert in that area, in that chosen field of yours. Amen. Amen. Number two thing that you require for you to progress or succeed in life is solve a problem. Let somebody say solve a problem. I can't hear you. Solve a problem. In chapter 2 of Daniel, Daniel cracked an impossible challenge given by the king. The king asked him to tell him his dream and the interpretation of the dream. And they said that no king has ever requested something like that from any human being. But Daniel did not run away from the challenge. The Bible says, Daniel said, King, O oh King, give us time. Hallelujah. That is the spirit of faith th- speaking. You see, when you have the spirit of faith, you're not afraid of anything. You're not afraid of anything. So that, Daniel went to the king and said, O oh King, give us time. And listen, at the end of the day, look at what the king did. The Bible says in Daniel 2.48, that the king promoted Daniel and gave him many gifts. And he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Remember, he was a captive. But because he was able to solve the problem for the king, he got promoted to become the ruler over all the territory. Babylonian territory, and also the chief administrator of all the wise men of Babylon. The key to promotion, the key to progress, the key to success is solving problems. Every challenge you face in life is a stepping stone to success. Every challenge you face in life is an opportunity for you to advance. Your attitude towards challenges must change, must become positive. And don't run away from challenges. Face that challenge. Face those fears looking at you. Are we still together here? Show me a great man and I will show you a man faced with many challenges. There are three things that will stimulate your creativity. One is your desired goals. The goals you want to desire. The goals that you have set for yourself. Number two thing that will stimulate your desire is the problems that you are facing. So the second thing that will stimulate your creativity are the problems that you are facing. And number three, three things that will stimulate your creativity are questions, the tough questions that life brings to you. So when you focus your attention on those goals, the problems in your life, and those tough questions, you will become smarter and more creative in life. Stop running away from those challenge, challenges. Face them. Hallelujah. The Bible says the righteous, they're as bold as a lion. If God be for us, who can be against us? In all these things, we are more than conquerors. So don't run away from challenges. Embrace them because that is the key to your success. Daniel said, give me that problem. Give me time and I will come back with that solution. And he came with the solution. It may be tough, but listen, tough men never, tough men don't die. Tough times never last, but tough people do. What you are going through right now, some people have gone through it and they have perished, but you are still standing. Hello, somebody. You are still standing. Hallelujah. The fact that you are still standing means you are a strong person. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God be for you, who can be against you? Nobody is strong enough to defeat you. You are unbreakable. You are unshakable. You are undefeatable. You are unmovable. Therefore, don't run away from challenges. The CEO of IBM was once asked a question. A man, a journalist asked him, that how do I increase my progress in life? And gave a very profound answer to that question. He said that double your rate of failure because success is at the other end of failure. Double your rate of failure. You see, you cannot cannot succeed in life until you face your fears and you take risk. Take risk. Dream big. Chase the things that you know that these things are beyond me, and then press into God for the key for the solution. Are we still together? 
When the Lord said, I will, the, the, the Lord said, I will multiply them and they will not diminish. I will glorify them and they shall not be small. Listen to me. Stop thinking small. Hallelujah. Stop thinking small. Think big because your dream is a preview of your tomorrow. We are, you are here as where you are today is a byproduct of yesterday's vision. So if you are limited in your vision, you'll be limited in life. So Daniel said, give us this dream. I mean, he said, give us time. Even though he didn't know the solution, but he went and sought the face of God. Listen to me. You see, which is, it, there's, you, you have the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. I mean, we have the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. The reason for the Holy Spirit is for us to be able to offer solution. The Bible says he will guide us into all truths. He will tell us things to come. Solving problems. Jesus was faced with a challenge to feed 5,000 people, plus people. And what did he do? The Bible says he knew what he ought to do. He knew exactly what he ought to do. Listen, what if Daniel was not able to come with that solution? He would have died with the wise men of Babylon. But Daniel continued to sharpen his spiritual skills, his sensitivity to the spirit, things of the spirit, to the point that the next time they called him, the Bible says there was an, a, a handwriting on the wall. And they called Daniel to read, to interpret. This time around, Daniel did not have to go and dream. Hello, somebody. The inspiration came immediately. Why? Because your creativity is like muscles. The more you use your creativity, the stronger it becomes. The more resilient it becomes. Engage your creativity. Start thinking. Get into creative thinking. Instead of you saying, I can't do it, ask yourself, how can I do it? Hello, somebody. You have the assignment. You are working on that dissertation. And you don't know what to do about it. Go to God and press into God and say, God, show me the solution to this problem. Give me the wisdom and the might and, and the, the, the wisdom and the creativity to be able to solve this problem and see God is faithful. He will answer your prayers. He will. I've seen this happen times and times over and over and over again in my life. And so Jesus, he needed to feed 5,000 plus people. And he knew exactly what he needed to do. He said that sometimes whereby in your work in, in God, you need instant revelation. Hello, somebody. We, you need instant revelation. You need to know what you need to do at the spur of the moment. I received, a few weeks ago, I received a phone call. And the phone call was about somebody who was you know, possessed with, uh, you know, a demon and the, the demon began to manifest. And I was called on the phone and I was speaking to, I said that you, I, I asked them to put the phone on speaker and I was praying for the, for the lady. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me to say, ask them to get a glass of water. So they got a glass of water. I prayed over the glass of water and I asked the lady to drink. I, mean, I asked them to give the glass of water to the lady. She drank the glass of water, surprisingly, and then the stomach began to swell up. And then, all of a sudden, she began to vomit. And that's how she got delivered. And the devil left her. To the glory of God. Now, we need to know how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit instantly to know what we ought to do. Because he's there. You're in a boardroom. And things are not going the way they ought to go. Or maybe you are, you are attending an interview. And you say, Lord, I'm not sure about this. And they can begin to connect with the Holy Ghost to tell you what to do at that point in time. The Holy Spirit is there to solve problems for us. There's a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Most High giveth him understanding. That is why you are a child of God. I refuse to be ordinary. Say to yourself, I refuse to be ordinary. I refuse to be like a natural man. I refuse because the Spirit of God that is on the inside of me makes me supernatural. And we sit together. So solving problems. Now, let's go to the next point, point number three. I'm trying to rush this because of time. How do we progress in life? Number three, you must deal with your temptations, your trials, and your oppositions. And this is where I want to pitch my tents. Now, for Daniel, for the, for the three Hebrew boys, the Bible said they, they were, they, a challenge was thrown at them 
The king asked them to bow before that image. Praise the Lord. But they refused to bow. And they said that our God is able to deliver us. Even if he does not deliver us, we will still not bow. There are things contending against your faith. Wanting you to give up your faith. But I want to encourage you this morning, child of God, do not give up your faith. The Bible says, contend for the faith which was once delivered unto you, unto us. Contend earnestly. There are challenges that you will face and you will ask yourself, what is the point going to church? Why am I serving God if I'm going through these hard times? Is the enemy wanting you to give up your faith? Jesus said to Peter, Peter, Satan has desired to have you and to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. What prayer did Jesus pray for Peter? He said, I prayed for you so that your faith does not fail. Please don't allow your faith to fail. You may lose everything, but please do not lose your faith. Do not lose your faith. Do not lose your faith. The Bible says, by faith, all things we see in this world came to be. God called those things that were not as though the way. Let nothing take you from the way from the presence of God. Let nothing stop you from coming to church because there's an attack on your faith. They want people to bow down to idols. There are idols in our environment, in our community today, in our world today. The idol called Job. The idol called Job. Your time, the man is supposed to work for six days. The seventh day is for God. But a lot of people will say, well, I need to make those pen, I mean, those pound stallions, the name and surname together. I want to make this, and they forfeit the presence of God for money. It's an idol. It's an idol. Refuse to bow. You think they don't know what they're doing to pay people double on Sunday? Because they want people to worship money. But Jesus, you cannot serve God and mammon together. Certain things will challenge your faith. But you must stand like children of measure and beg to say, we will not bow. We will refuse to, we refuse to bow. Don't tell your boss, I cannot work on Sunday. Hello. Who owns the heart? Who controls the heart? God owns it. And say to them, and we've seen people, we've heard testimonies of people coming here to say, I spoke to my boss, I don't want to work on Sundays anymore. And the boss said, okay, let's walk around this. And it happened for them. It's a plan, it's a trap of the devil. Do you realize that each time you come to church, you feel stronger? You feel encouraged in your heart. This is what the enemy wants to rob you of. Because he knows that the Bible's faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But if you're severe from hearing God's word, you're afraid to grow weak. And then he will have an upper hand over you. Are we still together here? But I want you to know this morning that every plans of the enemy concerning your life, the Lord will destroy them in the name of Jesus. So the things so they refuse to bow. And then for Daniel, for Daniel, Daniel prayed. And the Bible said they took him and they put him in the lion's den. He prayed, but it seemed as though God did not answer the prayer. They spoke concerning Lazarus. Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. But what happened to Lazarus? Lazarus died. Joseph was God's servant. He had a dream that he become a, the pre, he become a great person. And despite the dream, he got sold into slavery. And he went to prison for something he did not do. Jesus, the Son of God, he prayed, God, deliver me. And he died on the cross. Listen to me. You may have prayed, and it seems as though God did not answer your prayer. But listen to me. I've got good news for you this morning. You are coming back. Hallelujah. I want someone to write like the Terminator this morning and say, I'll be back. Come on. I'll be back. Say to somebody, I will be back. I'll be back. Come on, write to your feet and tell somebody, I will be back. Doesn't matter where the enemy has put me this morning. I'm coming back. I'm bouncing back in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. 
Where they left Daniel, they thought the lions would have killed him. But the king came in the following morning and said, Daniel, has your God been able to deliver you? And Daniel said, oh, king, live forever. The God whom I serve sent his angels to shut the mouth of the lions. Hallelujah. Joseph came out of prison and he became the priest of Egypt. Oh, Jesus rose on the third day from the grave. The enemy thought he would remain in the grave. But listen, Jesus rose up. With a new body, listen to me, you are rising up. It doesn't matter where the enemy kept you, you are rising up. Hallelujah. Let somebody rise to their feet this morning and say, I'm rising up. I'm bouncing back. I'm not remaining where the enemy kept me. I'm not going to remain on that level. I'm rising up in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I'm rising up. I'm rising up. They thought Daniel would die in the den of lions. The brothers of Joseph thought Joseph remained a slave in Egypt. But listen, by the time they saw Joseph, levels have changed. Levels don't change. They thought he was a slave. They thought they would meet a slave. But listen, they met him. They could not even recognize him. That is why somebody's story is changing this morning. Your story is changing in the name of Jesus. They saw him and they could not recognize him. Because they thought that he was a slave. In fact, they could not even, they thought maybe he was dead, and, but they did not know that he was the one they were talking to. Oh, God. The Bible says, if the priest of this world had known, he would not have crucified the king of glory. Listen, that thing that the enemy did for you or to you is a setup for your lifting. It's a setup for your lifting. Listen, all things work together for good to do who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So don't ever feel that you have been defeated. Listen, child of God, you cannot be defeated. It is impossible for you to be defeated. If nothing could hold Jesus in the grave, if nothing could stop him in the grave, if unbelieving disciples could not stop him, even the decaying elements could not stop him, on the third day he rose up. You are rising up. You are coming back in the name of Jesus. But listen, Pray. There are certain enemies we make in life due to our own carelessness. That scripture we read in Daniel chapter 6, the Bible says it came, the king had it in mind to exhort Daniel to make him ruler over the whole territory. It was a thought. And somehow those thoughts were communicated to the people. And they were enemies of Daniel. And then they began to gang up against him. I don't know if someone has read this book. Beware of the wicked man who promises you his shirt. Beware of the naked man who promises you his shirt. Now, the story, there's a, there's a chapter in that book, chapter 12 specifically. The chapter is titled, Loose Lips, Sink Ships. Lose lips, sink ships. And the story is about a young lady who recently graduated from the university and went to a company doing, she was an intern in that company, and they said to her that if, she, if everything works out well, they will make her permanent in the company. And then she made friends with one of her colleagues, and you know, they were discussing salary, and the colleague said to her, you know what, don't ask for anything below $1,500. It's, a, it's, it's not a recent book, so 17,500. So uh, it's, it's not a recent book. So, and the lady said, okay, I won't ask for it. So she caught, it turned out that the, she caught, got invited for an interview. She got to the interview, and the boss said that they would pay her about, I think, 19,500, 2,000 pounds, 2,000 dollars above the price she spoke to that lady about. And then she left the interview room, I went to the colleague of, of hers, and that one actually, yeah, I got a job, I got a job. You know, I've got 19,500. And that one said, even me that I've been working here for two years, I don't even earn that kind of money. The following day, the boss called this lady to her office and said, I can no longer hire you because you don't know how to zip your lips. It's not everything you say to yeah. people. It's not everything you say to people. When your testimony is, prim is still growing, 
premature. Don't share with people because you don't know who those who like you and those who hate you. Some people don't like you without for no reason at all. They don't just like the way they, they don't like your pretty face. Some people are jealous because you are taller than them. Yeah, people have very silly reasons why they don't like you. And so stop telling people about your that's certain, certain things you don't tell people. Keep those things to yourself. That way you will have you won't have unnecessary battles. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can avoid unnecessary battles. But listen, today we want to deal with, maybe we're going to pray for 10 minutes, deal with certain, you know, oppositions. The king wanted to elevate Daniel, but these oppositions were there to stop him from being elevated. And so even though you have the skills, you are talented, you are anointed by God, you are diligent, you are hardworking, but somehow you're not making the progress you're supposed to be making. It's because there are invisible forces limiting your progress in life. And those are the forces you want to deal with this 